Next up, we have Dratini, the adorable first stage form of Dragonite with an infinitely better shiny. This little dragon snake charmed its way into trainers' hearts right from its debut in the first generation. Many will remember the massive pain it was to get in the first gen games. One would have to be really, really patient with a super rod in the safari zone, or they would have to obtain a hefty sum of coins to get one at the game corner and sell it on city. And this was only an option in red and blue. For some reason, in yellow, it was the safari zone or bust. And those who played Pokemon on Crystal will also fondly remember the extreme speed Dratini they received at the Dragon's Den, which made an already rare Pokemon feel even more special. It would be a challenge to raise Dratini into a Dragonite, but it was always worth it. Fans of the anime outside of Asia were unable to see the Dratini-centric episode of the Indigo League series, unfortunately, as it contained firearms. They had to wait until the episode Beauty is Skin Deep, where none other than gym leader Claire had one. Today, we'll be examining how Dratini fared in Little Cup across the generations. And so, we ask, how good was Dratini actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. For those unaware, Little Cup wasn't widely played competitively before Generation 4. And even then, it didn't really begin to take off until Pokemon Platinum, which is why that is our starting point when covering Little Cup Pokemon. Dratini got an even later start in the tier, as at first it was overshadowed by Bagon, in a vicious parallel to Dragonite being outclassed by Salamence and OU. However, when Heart Gold and Soul Silver came around, Dratini regained the extreme speed it had lost in the transition from Generation 2 to 3, and in doing so, instantly valued itself into a role as one of the most dangerous offensive threats in the metagame. In fact, it outdid its evolution in this regard. Dragonite gaining extreme speed provided it a niche Salamence couldn't replicate in OU, but Dratini gaining extreme speed meant it left Bagon in the dust entirely. This was not to say Bagon became an outclassed unused Pokemon, but it was far more difficult to justify since it had a tough time matching the effortless excellence Dratini dished out. Yes, Dratini went from non-existent to instantly becoming the Little Cup metagame's defining dragon type. One of its premier wall breakers and just generally a great Pokemon. It could run a huge variety of sets and it ran all of them to great effect. Dragon set was already naturally vicious in a metagame with so few steel types as pretty much everything that wasn't Bronzor or Aaron would drop in one shot to Draco Meteor or Outrage. Against many teams these were effectively auto KO but even in the high powered environment of DPP Little Cup this was notable. Bronzor and Aaron weren't exactly safe against Rutini either which could run Fire Blast and or Surf to destroy them with ease or Waterfall on all out physical sets, whose brute strength could overpower Bronzor anyway. Plus, Aaron wasn't exactly common at all, and when it was used, it usually wanted to sweep, meaning it wouldn't be used to tank powerful dragon hits that would chunk it hard anyway. But while yes, Dratini was outstanding at forcing KOs even by the high standards sets by DPP Little Cup, in which Pokemon regularly fainted every other turn or close to it, that wasn't the only thing it was good at. Being unwallable was all well and good, but DPP LC wasn't about walling, it was about revenge killing. However, revenge killing Dratini wasn't exactly easy either, and it was all thanks to extreme speed, which let it leave a nasty chunk on its revenge killers, if not invalidate them as options entirely, had they dropped to a certain health percentage. For example, Dratini's Life Orb Extreme Speed hit one of its most common revenge killers, the popular Scarf Snover, for around half, which was particularly dangerous considering Snover's Stealth Rock weakness. Dratini could pull similar tricks against other revenge killers like Mankey and Elekid, who weren't Rock's weak, but were hit even harder by E-Speed, and the latter had to continue with its own life or recoil. Even Gligar, who was genuinely physically bulky, would take a hefty hit from E-Speed, and this could be a genuine game breaker considering how important Gligar's health was to its team. Dratini fit perfectly into Gen 4 Little Cup, the fastest metagame of all time. It was absolutely terrific at the hit and run playstyle that characterized the tier, especially because of how it could often leave a mark even if it was revenge killed thanks to E-Speed. In a metagame where 1 for 1s were standard, Dratini could regularly force 2 for 1 or something very close to it, which was a huge advantage in the metagame's tightly contested battles, and that was if it didn't sweep outright with Dragon Dance, which it threatened to at the drop of a hat. It wasn't bad enough that Dratini dropped devastating Dragon Bombs and slammed Revenge Killers with extreme speed. No, it could grab a Dragon Dance and potentially win the entire game. Forget taking a big hit from extreme speed with Scarf Snover. Nope, it would drop. Using Krogong and his priority in a similar way? Forget it, it got crushed. This, in addition to its immense power, showcased another tremendous trait Dratini had, its variety in moveset. Its mix set in and of itself 
had several variants since it could mix in moves like Surf, Substitute, or a second Dragon Staff. It's mix that could even run Dragon Dance if it really wanted to. Of course, straightforward all physical Dragon Dance was monstrous as well. These two sets were its bread and butter, and that was already more than enough to make Dratini as great as it was, but that was far from the extent of what it could do. It could use its huge neutral power and extreme speed to act as a great lead that put its team off on the right foot immediately. It could run a surprisingly effective Choice Scarf set, as there was nothing like outrunning and ice beaming an unsuspecting Gligar, and even once the jig was up, fast Draco Meteor and Outrage were incredibly dangerous weapons. Dratini could even run a monstrous Choice Band set, whose extreme speed had unmatched instant revenge killing power, and whose Outrage was nearly impossible to withstand. Nothing like cleanly one hit killing full health Munchlax. Plus, in case you thought Dratini was just an offensive machine, well, it'd be fine if that were the case, given how unbelievably destructive it was, but it was not the case. Dratini's unique typing allowed it to withstand hits from Ice Beam less agility Chin Chow, which was most of them given how they preferred hidden power ground to hit other Chin Chow. Plus, its excellent shed skin ability meant that in a pinch, Dratini could potentially act as status relief for its team against something irritating like will o -Wisp Dust Skull, especially since Draco Meteor threatened Dust Skull like few other attacks in the tier safely could. And so all in all, Dratini was a terror and was an absolutely terrific, important, defining Pokemon in the fourth generation of Little Cup. The 5th generation's addition of Eviolite meant Dratini's Dragon Stabs, while still fearsome, were no longer the spammable auto-KO buttons they had been before, and this was compounded by the addition of Pharisee. Furthermore, Dratini had fierce new Dragon-type competition in Axu. However, there was a flip side to this. While it did tank and even punish Outrage all day long, thanks to Iron Barbs, Pharisee still feared Fire Blast. Additionally, even with Eviolite, most other Pokemon were not exactly eager to take on Dratini. It was still quite a powerful Pokemon, using boosts at high base power moves. Furthermore, Dratini was an excellent user of Eviolite itself. This made it much more difficult to revenge kill, and it paired beautifully with its shed skin ability to prey on weak, status-reliant defensive teams. At first, Dratini had the significant advantage of being able to fire blast Pharisee, whereas Axu was totally walled by it, but this disappeared in Black and White 2, where Axu gained the Pharisee demolishing superpower. However, this wasn't Dratini's only advantage over its Tusk competitor, and it retained its place in the metagame. In addition to its excellence of shed skin, Extreme Speed was one once again an incredible tool, especially during the reign of the terrifying Sandrush Drover, and once again removing Scarf Snover efficiently if Dratini chose to run Life Orb. Plus, Fire Blast also helped Dratini deal with Bronzer far more effectively than Axu did. Of course, there was also that cool thing you could do, which was what again? Oh yeah, you could use Dratini and Axu on the same team and absolutely destroy everything. Dragon Spam was one brutal play style to fight. Of course, there was one very special set Dratini could run that Axu couldn't match, the Rest Talk Dragon. Dragon Dance variant. This took full advantage of Dratini's Dream World ability, which boosted its defense while it was status. This made it nearly unbreakable on the physical side, and a huge bulk investment as well as recovery allowed it to easily accrue multiple Dragon Dances for a slow burn sweep, really making the most of Dragon's peerless mono attacking coverage. Plus, if Dratini called Outrage with Sleep Talk, it wouldn't lock into the move and eventually be confused. Of course, this set was incredibly specialized and required huge support, such as Magnemite's steel removing abilities, but the potential upside was just just as big, as this Dratini was capable of withstanding dangerous physical attackers and setting up a sweep for itself. And so overall, the fifth generation was a step down for Dratini, but it still had a solid place in the Little Cup metagame. Dratini's step down between Gens 4 and 5 was nothing compared to the blow it was dealt in Generation 6. The new addition of Fairy Types completely blanked its Dragon Stab like nothing before. This was akin to a movie where a character talks about how they're about to retire or quit or whatever. A sure sign of death. But wait, you say? Surely it wasn't that rigid a nail in the coffin for Dratini as that unoriginal movie trope? Fairy Types had weaknesses too, and Dratini had a great move pool. So surely these were just new roadblocks that Dratini could swat away like it had done to Fairy before, right? Well, theoretically, yes. Both Dratini's Mix and Dragon Dance set ran Iron Tail to hit the immensely powerful Spritzy that would otherwise stonewall it. However, this had issues. Issues besides Iron Tail's oft infuriating accuracy, which in and of itself was already an off traveled road to frustration. Previously, Dragon Moves had been so massively threatening because even if they hit a Steel type, they would do significant damage, and thus the burden of prediction tended to be on the player switching into the Dragon type. Even if you dropped the Draco into a Steel type, you still chunked it 
somewhat. Now the mere threat of doing a cool 0% to a spritzy switch in put the burden of prediction on Dratini and that dissuaded his mix set from doing what it really wanted to do, spamming Draco Meteor. It was much easier to pivot around when it so often felt forced into using Iron Tail. What about Dragon Dance sets then? Outrage hadn't been nerfed and Dragon Dance would give the Iron Tail the extra kick it needed to really put Spritzy down. However, the necessity of running Iron Tail meant Dratini couldn't run Fire Blast and was thus helpless against Ferrisseed and Ponyard. And it was either that or the similarly undesirable prospect of dishing extreme speed. Sure, Magnapole Magnemite could help with the steals, but it's at that point that we come to the heart of why Dratini wasn't used. It just wasn't anywhere near as consistent as the other choices in the tier. It was a lot of work to maybe get some decent damage in, whereas the meta's top dogs were effortless at ripping through other teams. And the rewards were far from guaranteed given its frailty and life or recoil. Plus, if Snubble was used instead of Spritzy, it also came packing Intimidate, so it could even tank Iron Tail just fine. And all that work would really be for nothing. Dratini just wasn't worth its headache, and thus wasn't used in serious Gen 6 Little Cup. And did anything change for Dratini in Generation 7? Yes! For the worse, the best Pokemon were back and just got better, while several excellent new ones joined the fray, including the infuriatingly eternal wall, Marini, which stuffed mixed teeny entirely. Dragon Dance sets were much better off, in addition to their still existing problems from the previous generation, which were still just as present and crippling as they had been before, they now had to also contend with the tremendous physical wall, Mud Break. Sure, you could look for something that Dratini could technically do, and then you'd get into an actual game and see how difficult and not worthwhile such an attempt would be. Most players having a experienced Generation 6 knew better than to bother, and it didn't take an experienced metagame genius to see that you were better off using most other Pokemon. And as such, Sun and Moon was Dratini's most forgettable generation, at least it had been given a shot before. Let's not beat around the bush. Once again, Dratini was entirely worthless in Generation 8. Mudbray and Marini and Ponyard and Porygon's collective prominence was bad enough, but everything was able to deal with it somehow. Nothing was really that threatened. Fairy types were less ubiquitous with Spritzy's fall, but that didn't even matter at this point. Dratini had no longevity, and its power was unreliable. Now, this isn't a hard and fast rule, but a generally good way to ask yourself if a Pokemon is worth using is this. On its best day, what is this Pokemon going to do? For Dratini, the answer was that it might do over half to one Pokemon before being KO'd. This wasn't something worth wasting one of your precious six Pokemon slots on. And so the Little Cup player base didn't. And that's it, so how good was Dratini actually? Well, it started out as an excellent piece of the first widely played competitive generation of Little Cup. It was perhaps the most outright ferocious attacker in a tier that had almost nothing but ferocious attackers. It took a step down in generation five, but it was still a solid part of the metagame, especially alongside fellow dragon type Skullcracker, Axu. But everything changed when X and Y's fairy type nation attacked and Dratini disappeared, never to be seen in competitive Little Cup ever again. Now we hope we get something good in the future, as it's always a pleasure to see it. Thanks for watching, everyone. And as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Swipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content. And in the comments, I want to know, what do you think about competitive Dratini? How would you buff it because it really needs it? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos. And thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.